Welcome back to another episode of Dex and the City. Today, I have my lovely, sweet friend, Kata, on the podcast. Hello. I am so happy to have you here. I've really been looking forward to this. Me you too. have no idea. Tell them a little bit about yourself so you can kind of introduce yourself to them and they know a little, little, just a little bit, nothing, nothing too detailed yet, but yeah, that's always such a like a loaded <laughs> question. There's so much tell me to about tell. You. <laughs> There's so much to tell. Which life, which yes, life are we yeah. talking about in this current life? Yeah. In this current life, I am an author, a musician, motivational speaker, a writer. In my former life, I was a lot of other things. I knew whenever I met you in person, for sure, I was like, I really want her on my podcast because since I've been following you, I know ins and outs of your story. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I want to ask you a bunch of things about it. But it's very inspiring. I know one thing that the savages know about me is, you know, I've been through my fair share of things, but I love when people grow from that mm -hmm. and can become someone and share, you know, whatever experiences that they've grown through and, and show people that it's possible. Yeah, you're you know? being the proof. Yes. You're and I love proof. that. And yeah. with everything, I know there's even things I don't know. And I cannot wait to get into everything with you because you're very inspiring. I like compliments. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Hey, at least you're Just honest. Keep, Some people are like, no, stop it. No, I love like, it. No, stop I'm it. Like, hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, you could just say thank you. <laughs> you know? I will say thank you. And I also think, you know, compliments from people who inspire me and people who I admire also hold a little bit more weight. So it does mean something to me. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Don't get me crying yet because I'm not I, doing I, that with I you. Get out of here. I feel it coming. <laughs> I'm not doing this today. Uh, she called it an expert. I no. did. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the sec and it was it was literally right after I had met you in person mm -hmm. and I was reading through my submissions and I was like, okay, she's either <laughs> she's gonna hate me because I sent this to her or she's gonna understand. And so I was like hey, if you want to be on my podcast, I feel like this would be something great for you to talk about. So I don't even know where to begin. I guess first I'll just kind of ask you to touch briefly or however you know in depth you want to on your experience with it, why you started maybe or has it always been a thing where you know, it came from? Yeah, so I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think statistics would back me up. I was already inclined to be an addict. So I grew up with, you know, two parents that had addicted parents. I had addicted parents. I was taken into the system and I grew up in the foster care system with a ton of trauma happening, you know, and there were consequences of those things. CPTSD, mm -hmm. you know, when you grow up like that or you grow up with a tremendous amount of trauma or seeing addiction normalized or it's just, I don't want to say it's a more kind of a normal families. though. Families that are growing up in poverty, it's normalized because not normalized, but it is normal. No, it is. Um, it's yeah. very, very normal because it's a way to numb your pain mm -hmm. because you're in a hole that you can't see your way out of. And these communities, the communities that I grew up in, nobody had anybody. So there wasn't help from the outside. There was you and yourself, and you probably had some kids that you didn't know how to take care of, and you had to work three jobs. Like, even if you were trying to make it work, it just seemed like the mountain was insurmountable. So growing up in the system, I got into some trouble. It wasn't anything crazy. It was actually super, like, mild. Like, okay. I wasn't a thug yeah. at, by any means. Like, I could fight, but it w I wasn't out there doing crazy stuff. But in a small county, they didn't really have anywhere to put me at a certain point, and I had confinement time. So I basically grew up in prison, oh like from shit. 14 to 16 and a half. And then I was in a home for a while, and then I violated. And when I violated, they gave me nine months, and then they passed SB 81, which is basically saying all nonviolent offenders that were taken into state custody by the county were now re-released back to the county, but the county had been done with me since they'd turned me over to yeah. state property. So I had grown up like in a cell and when they released me, they gave me two weeks in the Crystal Hotel and like said, figure it out. No money, 
no resources normally That's how they do it but though. parole usually like they give you housing they get they yeah. get like integration programs you know and they were like none of it like you're really? off to the yes it was insane and so but i was off parole and i hadn't been like uh, out from anybody's thumb for a long time ever, since i was like 10 11 years yeah. old you know so there was like a double-edged sword but that town that's my hometown like meth is it's now taken over by fentanyl but meth is was what was running rampant there so that's where i kind of started my career was with that and then it evolved into multiple other substances like i quit meth for quite a while and i was like working in the industry and then i relapsed and then i was doing heroin and meth together and then it just like progressively got worse with arrests and all different types of stuff but yeah and what 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 made you stop that's kind of a crazy story too my sister invited me to her wedding actually okay. and like me and my family have never you know we didn't grow up together really we endured a lot so i was in full scale like full blown like noodle grooving on a corner like wasn't homeless cuz i ha still danced so i had money you yeah. know but i was bad real bad like the people you would look at and be like she needs help you know you wouldn't recognize me as the same person so she was getting married and i didn't think she was going to invite me like that made sense to me and yeah. she messaged me and she said if you're sober you can come to my wedding mm. and i was like hmm you know it's crazy because like yeah. I was talking about this last night with the girls and I said, it's easy for me to do something for someone that I love. And apparently at that time I wasn't someone that I loved, but she was, I think I explained that wrong. Yeah, you did. No, oh, okay. you did. And I absolutely love that for you. I think yeah. it's beautiful. I'll just tell you what I know about okay. drugs or anything of that sort. I was a smoker and I, that was on and off. I would like stop and then, you know, for a year or something. And then I would try, you know, start again. And I had a group of, friends that were in and out of my life and they were big partiers I was like I'm in my 20s like I'm going out four or five nights a week like there's no stopping me you know no sleep like just going hard in the paint first of all I couldn't stand the drip I was like this is crazy oh, who am I what part. am I doing that's that my <laughs> friend my friend loved that and I'm like girl again I can't blame her but I knew better because I knew she dabbled in those things yeah and um she ended up getting the entire friend group on it. Okay, so I did that, and then it was, oh, we're going to go to, um, what's that thing called, Jeremy, where there's, like, all the lights, and it's, like, the EDM, and, yeah, but what's the one in Orlando? EDC. EDC. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go to EDC. We're going to do, right? And then I was like, whoa, I love this. This you is love everything great. on I'm yeah. like, what? I want to be everybody's friends. I'm like frolicking at 2 a.m. <laughs> in these mushrooms that are all lighting up like crazy. And then it was, oh, okay, we're going to do some tabs. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, and then it, but so here's the thing with me. I don't have an addictive personality. So I, not saying I would do this ever again, but I could do these things and I would talk myself out of liking it, even though it didn't run in my family and I, I, was, you know, my grandparents are freaking amazing, like they're Lord loving, like whatever. I still was interested and I was still wanting to bandage maybe some things, go get away from the pain like yeah. you said in the beginning. I was still wanting to find something and thankfully it didn't do enough for me, I guess, yeah. but I was still searching. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. Like Distraction. Who, yeah. And who, I don't know where the this is coming from, com coming from you know no. like in and, and that's a huge problem now like yeah, it's crazy it's, and it's so sad because as if the drugs weren't bad enough if it wasn't just drugs, like drugs are bad enough if they're the drugs that they're right. supposed to be but then yeah. now it's like they're cutting all this other in it now you have the fentanyl that's coming out and people are like dropping like flies yeah. and that is it makes me sick the the whole epidemic in itself is like Everybody always has so much to say about God or Christianity. And I I am not a judger. I'm not someone that says I'm perfect. I'm not a Bible thumper. 
Babble Thumper, someone that shoves it into people's face no. because I don't like being that way. I'd rather just get into nice, good conversation and see everybody's points of views. Yeah. I'm also not so I would I would talk to an atheist. I would talk to anybody because yeah. I You respect autonomy. Right. Yeah. However, if you really read and you actually know who he is, mm. he didn't hang out in the churches no. with the Jesus priests. He was a thug. Oh, honey. Jesus was he was thug. out there spitting game in the streets. I was he saying, was it's like Jesus with wouldn't even have hung out with y'all. No, he like, would have hung out y'all with y'all are too prissy, yeah. baby. He was here to save, <clears throat> so he was hanging out in the streets. He was hanging out with the thieves, the liars, the the, the uh, ones that needed to be yeah, saved. Yeah, the tax collectors, the d- addicts, the Can prostitutes. Can I tell you my favorite story? And this is like, Please sorry, do. we're gonna go biblical real quick because my favorite character in the Bible is Rahab. And Rahab was a prostitute. Mm-hmm. And people, I think, really forget who God is because he uses people based on their heart. Yep. And he knows their character. And all, because through all the, through all the all bullshit. All of it. And they, like, they're looking at this outside thing. Like, like, what are you she doing? She did what she had to do to survive in a time yeah. where women wasn't doing well. No. Like, they was killing us. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we weren't even <laughs> able to, like, we talk were nothing. in front of men. Like, yeah. we weren't able to do nothing. We were the 27th wife. And she was just wife, trying to get some you know? food for her kid. Yeah. And she was like, I guess this is what I got to do. And everybody, like, just demonizes her mm-hmm. for it. And God was like, I trust that one yep. to save Israel. Like, they're like, huh? But you want to come against your your neighbor for their whatever it is. Like, God Better uses preach. people based on their heart, mm-hmm. based on their character. And it's like, did you read any of it? You know? Like- well, well, the problem is, <laughs> not yeah, not to go, like, too far, but the problem is, is people, when they become judgmental and try to cast stones for other people's actions, when yeah. literally he says, do not do that. It's the only requirement. Don't get, yeah, don't get confused with the people who are making it a, a way. Because really, that's not how it is. He wasn't judgmental. No. He, he was loving on those people. And what I feel like we are supposed to do is that. So... The epidemic is a lack it's, of love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lack of the Lord. It's a lack of the fruits of the spirits. And, you know, it just or just love. If you don't believe you can fill in the blank, you guys, with whatever you want to. Mm-hmm. However, love conquers all things. Yeah. And when you have these people who are out here hurting, and if you if you guys have addicts in your your life and you're listening, I know it's hard, okay? Yeah. I'm not gonna cry. Um, it's okay. You're safe. Yeah, you can be. Woo! Yeah. It's it's hard uh, when you love someone. Okay, because you can't help them. Yeah, it's because you can't save them, yeah. and all you want to do, and that's why people get so frustrated with addicts, because all they want to do is shake them and say, "Hey, yeah. just do this." And they can't help them, so they feel yeah. powerless. And only in that powerlessness do they understand how the addict feels. Yeah. So it's hard. And, like, I get that, you know, when you're on the opposite side. Mm-hmm. But the best thing um, that I can say is to just love anyways. I'm super grateful that I'm not a heroin addict so, <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Good call, Sam. Good call. Yeah, yeah, it's good. (laughs) I mean, I have to say, imagine how much life I would have missed. But that's a big deal. Like it's so. so, Like I'm literally. That's a big deal. Like it is. It really is. But I'm so far away from it now that I think I forget. But when I see other people, I'm like, that's a huge deal. Only see like who you could become. Like you'll never get to see what this life was meant for if you can't figure out how to get some help and at least. You know, give it a chance, give it a year, give it a yeah. month, give it a day. Just say, I'm going to go to rehab for a day and like, you know, Let's like try it. make a decision to try and see what happens, Yeah, you know? And I, like I was telling you about something else, like it's the willingness. You just yeah. need the willingness. You don't have yeah. to have, a, you don't have to have a plan. Don't get in your head about it. Like, oh, I got to do all this. Like, I remember like people were like, oh, well, what am I going to do with my dog? Send it to your mom's. Go to rehab you're gonna die and your dog's yeah, not gonna have a dad show, anyways exactly. you know like there's a million reasons to stay out there and get high and none of them are valid because if you're not here then none of those reasons are here yeah 
So, and that's the end result of addiction. Please get help. Please seek some form and see if that works because you deserve a chance to see all the At amazing- At least try. Imagine how many people, like my videos, you know, like the comments that I get and stuff, like the way that people interact with them, I'm like, man, there was a, there was a chance this wouldn't have made anybody's day ever. Like the things I've been able to do in this life, there was a chance, like an alternate dimension, an alternate path I would have taken. None of this would have happened. Mm -mm. But it did. It did because of one decision yep. that I made. So if you needed any convincing, I don't know. But I mean, this is living proof right here. That's yeah. why I wanted to bring you on because I feel like I can sit here and talk yeah. for an hour and say whatever and motivate and tell them, you know, your life's mm -hmm. worth living and yada, yada, blah, blah. But it hits different when it comes from someone who's actually experienced it. You can and do it. got out. Yeah. You know, it's powerful. It really is. So I really enjoy it. I think this is now my favorite podcast that I've ever done. So I'm serious. It was really good. There was like, not, I mean, yeah, he's going to say it when the camera shut off. I already know. Um, I really enjoyed having you on. Our spirits danced. They did. Yeah. They did. And you made me cry. So I haven't done Aww. that on the podcast. So, well, maybe I made myself cry, but it's I this. I think you did. This but it's made me cry. It's, it's okay. a safety. Yeah. There's a safety. I was comfortable yeah. in, in, you know. But yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having and me. And you're you're a sweetheart. And I'm really, again, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm really proud of you, for thank sure. Thank you. And I'm so proud of you, too. Thank you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you have any questions for her, you can follow her. I'll obviously link all her stuff down below. Um, and I'm sure she would be happy to chat with y'all. She makes really good motivational videos on her Instagram. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.